He participates on multiple nonprofit boards, including the Associate Board of Lawyers for the Creative Arts. I'm sure he had a hellish trip here. Let's welcome Ilya. That's a right, made it. Th th thank you, and, and sorry for being that guy. <laughs> Someone had to be. Yeah. It's, it's just you. All right, so let's start with a question I hear all the time. I'm sure you hear it all the time. I'm sure people here would benefit from learning. If I'm talking about a band or a song, can I just use like a 10 second hook of that, of that music? I, I'm not going to be that lawyer that's going to say it depends. Uh, it depends. Really? <laughs> is, that a, is, that, wait, is that a flat no? Uh, no, no. Um, I mean, be best practice, I'd say, just, you know, don't walk out of here thinking like he said yes. <laughs> you, you know, he, he, I, no. Uh, in general, if, regardless of what kind of content it is, if you're thinking about content clearance, um, you know, the, I guess the lawyer piece of feedback is uh, you need to get permission unless there's some specific reason that you can come up with why you don't, right? Uh, I know this program was called uh, specifically fair use. Fair use is one of those reasons potentially, and it's a very complicated part of uh, copyright law, uh, but it's also not necessarily the only uh, principle under which you might not need to clear content. I'm happy to talk through that, uh, but uh, you know the it depends portion of can you go ahead and use that is why uh, because if there's um, a, a reason why why you can justify now of course like all of us can come up with a reason for why yep I, I should be able to do this but uh, under fair use specifically there are particular purposes. Uh, that if you're transforming uh, that, that song uh, or whatever that piece of content is uh, and you're using just enough to make your point, whether the point, the purpose is, you know, criticism, commentary, uh, there, there are some other uh, purposes, you know, teaching, um, you, can, you can justify it potentially under fair use. Is it worth it though? I feel like you can justify it, but when it comes down to Universal is filing a lawsuit against you because you used five seconds of back in black. Like, is it worth it? Can you can you argue that uh, without I losing said, your house? It, well, yes, potentially, um, because with copyright suits, uh, there is potential of fee shifting. Okay, so uh, what that means is uh, the other party would be responsible for lawyers' fees. Now it goes both ways, right? So if if somebody's losing that copyright dispute, then they're potentially, regardless of you know what a minnow somebody might be, they might be on the hook for that whale's uh, attorney's fees in in uh, resolving that dispute. But it does go the other way as well. So um, you know, in in business and and in, in a lot of intellectual property, the thought might be, especially if you're just starting out, it's not, am I right? It's uh, Am I going to get sued in the first place, right? Um, and that's potentially a problem uh, in terms of making that decision uh, of am I even going to expose myself to that risk? Mm -hmm. uh, the reason it's that way is because in the U.S., for usually each party is responsible for their attorney's fees, uh, and that's why it's a very pricey proposition to even try to defend yourself in some situations. Copyright law is is one of those areas where there is fee shifting if if uh, uh, if a defendant is right. So um, I think that a lot of very savvy companies they might uh, you know you brought up Universal as, as the example it, you know they know copyright law through and through mm -hmm. right. It's not going to stop them from sending a demand letter. So it's important to separate those out right. There's uh, no liability for somebody to go ahead and send a demand letter, and it's usually best practice to go ahead and send a demand letter because you can then show that I put this person on notice and they still kept doing it anyway, right? Uh, so from a perspective of somebody that might have a complaint, it, it would be good to, to send that 99% of the time. Uh, but that doesn't mean necessarily that they will sue you. Uh, it also doesn't mean that you should ignore it. Right? So if you do receive some sort of demand, uh, it should absolutely be something that gets responded to. 
uh, of course, best practices before you just angrily type back, no, I'm not doing anything wrong, uh, consult somebody, an attorney or just somebody that, that has that sort of feedback, maybe do your own due diligence as well. Of course, best practice, talk to an attorney, right? But um, while you're not going to ignore that demand letter, you don't necessarily need to be afraid of taking that initial action in the first place about show, showcasing some sort of content on your podcast. But it has to be done editorially. You have to be mindful. I, we all hear podcasters who will use a clip from Back in Black, to use that example again, as part of their intro music. They transform that copyrighted content into something different. Well, black and white there, right? Uh, in terms of your intro music, uh, absolutely you need to have your rights cleared for, for your intro music. Um, whether it's because you did an original song, uh, libraries are pretty accessible fee-wise, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to get a, a commercial license uh, through, I'm sure there's multiple services uh, that, that you can look at that it would be accessible through. Uh, no, uh, for, for your advertising your podcast, not just, let's say, not just the intro music, but just for promoting your podcast, you need to clear all music. Um, How's that even done? I mean, I, I'm sure someone here is thinking that. I, I wouldn't even know how to start. I would go about it through a library, honestly, uh, unless I've, I've got some some friend who is uh, uh, a musician that I want to showcase uh, and we've got some sort of agreement that way, or maybe I'm creative and I can make my own music, which obviously is not the whole point of this conversation. Uh, but y use a library, yes, you'll need to pay something, but it's not going to be uh, something that's outrageous and you'll feel comfortable that, that you're in the clear with something like that. I want to shift from fair use to interview content. Who owns that? If, if I, as a podcast host, want to do something with an interview I did with someone, maybe put it on television, do I own that content or do I need to get clearance from my guest to put it on other platforms? Sure. So, also a question of what's in that content that, that you're being, that, that's being talked about, right? So if uh, we're just talking about, uh, I don't know, what happened today, uh, some facts, right? That's not going to be protectable by copyright. So facts are not protectable by copyright. It's, it's the expression of those facts that's protectable by copyright. So if all we're talking about is something that happened and we're not reading somebody else's, uh, I don't know, book or